Well, it's 7 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm starting my day, I guess you could say. Just finished dinner with the family. Uh, we got to run up to uh, Saratoga Springs today, uh, you know, above Albany for uh, a load we're running out to Cisco. Oh, we got to stay in, stay in front of the sun here or you're blinded. But uh, yeah, we're going to run up there about four hours and I'm probably going to try to take my uh, eight hour break, deliver and then head back down, uh, well back down here uh, sometime tomorrow morning because the load doesn't have to deliver until 5 a.m. in the morning, but I figured I should just get down there, well up there I should say now, because uh, it's talking about some lake effect snow, some snow showers, and I don't know, I don't want to get, you know, stranded or have to deal with a bunch of nonsense, uh, trying to rush, I guess I could say, trying to rush up there while it's snowing or I'm hitting snow squalls or whatnot. So we're just gonna hop up in the truck, uh, finish up my pre-trip, and uh, get going. What kind of view I get up here, you know, out here in Pensatucky. We're nice pine trees sitting over here, but they just clear cut of them because this pole yard is gonna get shoved out all the way over into here. Um, in fact, they just got this property last year, moved it from Hazleton. But I figured I'd just show the sunset Pennsylvania could be pretty nice too every once in a while as long as we don't clutter it up with stuff and put warehouses all over the place <laughs> behind a truck coming in today so depending on the guard here I might be sitting here for 15 20 minutes before I get in here I don't know what they do now but whatever kind of procedures or maybe just the the guards not well trained whatever they're doing they can uh, they can't get you in and out of here real quick for some reason it takes like 15 minutes per truck I don't know if guys are bullshitting with the guards or what but you know one truck I should not have to sit here for about 10 or 15 minutes for one truck to go through jeez oh man about time he kept pulling away and stopping and then sitting there for a little bit just like he is right now all right we're gonna come to the side here so I don't rip nothing else off on that pothole like I already have all right, let's go out. Get in there and grab the paperwork. It's a nice sunset tonight, I tell you that. I like how it's blue with that contrast. Oh. Let's walk up in here. Get checked in, get our paperwork. Right, so we're gonna stick the trailer in the door. So, uh, I, I like just dropping it off right at, uh, right in a parking spot because if I have to put it in the door, I have to do a few extra steps. But hey, you know what it is, it is. That's why I'm leaving so early. So we're gonna drop in the door and uh, try to go as fast as I can to get out of here because uh, I would like to try to get some sleep tonight before I have to deliver tomorrow at 5 a.m.
just got done putting our information in the logbook, you know, our uh, trailer number and our BOL number and everything, because lately DOT has been cracking down on that a lot, I guess, or at least that's what uh, safety keeps throwing over the uh, message here on the ELD. They keep messaging uh, all kinds of things that DOT has been cracking down on here. And like I said, I guess your uh, your top part of your ELD has been one of them since, you know, it's hard for them to get money any other way now because most of the trucks now are newer out there. And I would imagine a lot of the raggy stuff, raggedy daggedy stuff is off the road now because guys cannot afford to keep running. Let's see if I can get out of here without nipping the curb here or nipping the back part of that trail over there because I'm in the... I'm in a little narrow spot here in the yard, in the middle of the yard where it narrows down at. All right, we made it out of here. So I am going to, well, I guess Prime's going this way, so I'm going to stay to the left. So we're going to go over to the guard shack here and get checked out. And I got about a four and a half hour, don't stop there, Prime. I'd like to get by you two. I know you don't want to walk your fat ass in there, but... Yeah, yeah, pull up a little bit more. Come on. All right, thank you very much. This guy's trying to get in his truck. Thanks, Prime. You're freaking right, great. We're gonna check out with the best security guard here at Tyson. Why is she the best? She is the best because, well, one, because she's the best because she hates everyone equally. What the fuck is yeah. that? That's hey. YouTube thing? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Not live, but oh. <laughs> you gotta upload it. Like, what is it on uh, YouTube? What's my channel? They didn't tell you my channel? No, I just like looked at it. That's all I did. Oh, it's Jack Knife TV. Jack Knife TV. Well, yeah, let me give you all the information. Make sure we do this the right way here, since you know, there's the seal number. Okay. And there's that. The trailer number's right. The seal number's right. All Am right. Am I heavy? No. No. Uh, no, you're right. I'm good. All right. All right. All right. I'll see, see you. Later. Yep. She's all happy now. She gets to be on. Gets to be on YouTube. Man, she's a great security guard. I wish every security guard was like that. Quick, easy, in and out. We're gonna hop up in the truck here, and uh, we're gonna get going. Uh, maybe I'll talk about something going down the road. I don't know. We'll have to see how. Uh, Let's see how things go. All right, so we're getting off at uh, the Maybrook exit here, off of uh, 84 in New York. And uh, I don't know, I call it Newburg, but it's it's Maybrook. And we're gonna head over to this TA over here, and we're gonna get some fuel for 3.50 a gallon. It's pretty much the uh, the cheapest place up here in the Northeast, at least for me is uh the, the ta's up here in new york you know unless you get down in maryland or virginia it's pretty much uh you know this this is the only show in town that you get a decent discount at now look at this guy this guy is coming out the entrance here and jeez uh, <laughs> all right it's not that bad at least this entrance is pretty wide but I hate when they do, when they come out the entrance at, uh, what's that other TA there? The other TA in uh, Bloomington on 80 there when you come into New Jersey. I hate when they come out the entrance there like that. But, you know, I'll, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. You know, he's a Volvo driver. So we're getting fuel here for 250 a gallon. It's pretty much the cheapest place in the Northeast for me using com data because, uh, it's uh let's see the posted price right now is 245 so let's like like a dollar five off um you know the posted price using using my com data discount and you know if i was in pennsylvania or whatnot i'd be paying like 405 or 410 probably with my discounted rate so it's like i said it's the cheapest place really in the northeast to get fuel for me right now uh, unless i get out into like virginia or maryland so Huh. I guess the uh, 
hear like some water running. I'm guessing it's a coolant or something in the uh, heater core. That's a little weird. And uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get out and probably get like about 100 gallons to try to finish off the rest of the week here because I'm not gonna be running this whole week. I got a doctor's appointment, and then my wife is uh, going with her mom and grandmother and uh, my daughter and everything on like a I don't know what you want to call it, like a mother's uh, woman's thing vacation to t den uh, Disney World. <laughs> I don't know what you want to call it, like a generational, generational thing, you know. And uh, yeah, so I'm not going to be working this week a lot, and then the next week I got to take off because I got to watch the, kid, the my son. Um, you know, he's still going to go to school and everything. So yeah, I'm going to have a, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna have a really crappy uh, settlement for this week and next week I'm not gonna have any settlement. Um, so luckily I have some money put away to pay my bills and everything. But like I said, I, I don't know, I'm digressing. Let me just get out and get fuel here. Fuel for 350 a gallon with my compact discount. And uh, I don't know, it was probably about, it's about almost an hour and a half ride from hospital where we left. But, for right now, the TAs in New York are pretty much uh, the cheapest place for me to get fuel, at least with the combat at this count. You know, if they get into Virginia or Maryland, it, you know, it's pretty cheap, but the Northeast, they're still talking about paying about $4 a gallon for fuel. So, there's $300 down the drain, or out the tailpipe, I should say. Oh, man. All right, so. We're going to going down the road here and I guess I'm going to talk about a few things maybe we'll talk about I don't know should you get involved in the trucking industry in 2024 how about that maybe you know get your CDL or whatnot uh, so you have 112 miles to go until I get to the rest area up there so I got about a I've got about an hour and 45 minutes of driving so let's uh get out of this TA here and get going down the road and uh, yeah I guess we'll chat about something so well well let me let uh, sandal guy here and then prime's pulling out of here and he's gonna take his good old time uh, I guess he thinks I'm gonna like slow down no I'm not all right Well, thank you, Prime, for letting me out. I don't know. I don't know. Tonight, I'm just not. I'm not feeling it. You know, I'm not feeling it. I, I don't got the the vibe uh, to, you know, get out here and make some good content. But I, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. So uh, this is probably like the tenth time I've tried to record this, but I'm going to try to give my opinion or whatnot, or whether or not 2024 is a good year for you to, you know, get into the trucking industry as a whole. Whether that's getting your CDL. Uh, and becoming a company driver or be being leased to a carrier or getting your authority. So I'm going to start out simple, like, you know, you guys that are new coming into this industry, getting your CDL, I, I have a feeling it's going to be really hard to, I don't know, maybe, I wouldn't say make it or, or get a get a job within the trucking industry but it's just gonna it's not gonna be you know you're not gonna be sought after like you were previous years 
the market is so flooded with drivers right now, whether that be new CDL holders or guys that are all laid off from, you know, yellow or from, uh, I don't know, UPS. Uh, was it UPS Freight? I don't know. Somebody, UPS just laid off a bunch of people. Uh, the, the, you know, the economy is just hurting right now, and there's just so much, I don't know, inflated growth of drivers in this industry. You know, the, the inflated growth of constantly telling everyone there's a driver shortage and, and everything because turnover, turnover is huge in the trucking industry because let's just face it, it, you know, there's a, there's a lot of BS that goes on, uh, lies and manipulation and whatnot um, that, that, that goes on with these carriers. All right, it just, it just happens. If you got, you just got your CDL, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you know, try to get a local job if you can, but most likely you're going to be stuck trying to go to a mega carrier or whatnot until you put your two years in like everyone else. But, you know, times have changed. Like I said, you sometimes you can go to these local or localish TL, you know, LTLs and, and get a job. Uh, if you got hazmat, you know, most of those local fuel jobs, they want you to have like at least a year or two years experience hauling tanker or something. So, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's going to be rough out there just for everybody in general. Uh, you, you're probably going to have to run, you know, get with a mega carrier. But, but even now, like, a lot of mega carriers are having, they're, they're laying people off. Uh, there's carriers that are going out of business, drivers that are getting screwed. So it, it's, I don't know. It, I, I try, I'm trying not to be all doom and gloom but to be honest it really is i mean most most of these channels that you're watching right now uh you know it might you might be watching them from two or three years ago and you're making assumptions with information you got from two or three years ago it, you know and not, not only that some of these channels you're watching the guys are getting paid to bring drivers on so of course they're going to tell you everything's good you know that we but, you know, there's driver shortage. Everybody needs drivers and whatnot. And, you know, go get your CDL and come to Prime. Go get your CDL and come to, I don't know, who, who does it? Um, I don't know. I don't want to try to name a bunch of companies because then everyone's going to have, you know, they're going to get all bent out of shape about me um, talking, you know, not, not talk, talking smack, I guess you want to say. Talking smack about their company and whatnot. And that they're the best company and yada, yada, yada. And, you know. But, you know, that being said, take all the information, even information for me with a grain of salt, you know, and, and try, to, try to see how old these videos are that you're watching before you come out here and think you're going to make, you know, $100,000 a year off the bat. Because I tell you what, there's a lot of people like Walmart, a lot of people talk about Walmart, 110000 a year. There's a lot of people trying to get Walmart jobs. And sure, you might be one of them, but you might not be one of them. So if you're automatically, you know, thinking you're going to get your CDL and come out brand new and get the wall, you know, get get, a, get into Walmart or whatnot, it's it's not going to happen. They have requirements. All right, you're probably going to have to try to run your, you know, at least a year at an OTR company. You know, and then even that, you might be getting trading at an OTR company like Prime or swift or something like that you know and even there you might not be getting miles the miles that i've been hearing the miles have been dropping off for a lot of guys uh there's been a lot of uh talk about companies not wanting to pay uh certain out of route miles and things like that and guys getting stiffed on their paycheck you know, it's, it's just the economy. The economy in trucking is, you know, in the industry is really bad, let alone just the, the you know, the actual U.S. economy, all right? So, I, like I said, I'm not trying to be doom and gloom, but, I, you know, have, have a little bit of realism going into this. Expect things not to be great right off the bat, all right? Uh... You know, sit down, do do your personal finances before you decide to go out and get your CDL 
or you know switch companies if you're, you know as a company driver you know go through your personal finances understand what you got to make and and just have some realism looking into it you know don't automatically assume everything's going to be great you're going to run 3000 4000 miles a week now i'm sure there's guys that are watching the video that probably are you know uh, and you know I, I can't i can't talk about every I don't know, different facet of the industry or, or try to prepare everyone for, you know, what outcome they might have. But I can at least say that right now it's risky. It's risky getting into the trucking industry as a whole, even as a company driver. All right. So just take everything on YouTube with a grain of salt. Don't just jump in thinking you're going to get your CDL and you're going to be making two thousand dollars a week every week especially you know the, the the low that we that we're in right now with the market and, and let alone the economy all right so you know that being said at least as as a company driver or someone with a new cdl that's my take on things right now don't don't get hustled into this industry thinking you're you know you got like your new uber gig all right, you can run and, and pay off all your credit card debt and your bills and stuff like that. You might, you know, you might end up finding yourself stuck in a truck every, you know, for three or four weeks out on the road. And, you know, you're only making maybe $1,200 a week. If you're lucky, that might happen coming into this industry. All right, so that, that's my little take for, you know, newcomers. Don't be discouraged, but just realize, you know, the, the risk that you're, you know, the risk that you might find yourself in, the outcome that might happen, all right? It, you know, if you can afford to take that risk, you know, go ahead, get your CDL and whatnot, and, uh, you know, learn as much as you can. Don't just let them get you out on the road as fast as they can because that's what most of these companies try to do or even you know cdl schools you know realize that your life and other people's life are in your hands all right it, this isn't just you know yes you do hold the steering wheel but it, it isn't it isn't just that all the time all right so that's my little look at the industry at least as a new cdl holder or company driver view okay now if you're going to lease on to a carrier or become an owner operator or whatnot or get your authority i i have a different view for that too all right uh if you're leasing onto a carrier like most guys are right now because most carriers are the ones with the dedicated freight that in in my opinion even dedicated freighted freight right now dedicated freight ain't you know ain't looking so hot uh there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of cutthroat going on uh, within the way dedicated freight is being recontracted and, and, and everything and renegotiated. Uh, so that being said, you know, when you lease on these carriers, you might find yourself in the same boat uh, that a lot of guys are. They're, they're not able to get the miles. Uh, they're having to go to the load boards more and more. And the load boards, you know, you're talking about a dollar fifty, dollar seventy-five a mile freight. Now, that's not all the time. If you get in the right area and you follow the market properly and you do your triangle or whatnot, yes, you can. You can make two fifty, three dollars a mile still. It's just not going to happen consistently every week. And if you and if it is for you, that's great. But I tell you what, about eighty to ninety percent of the guys out here that are on YouTube or that you talk to in the truck stop are saying it they're you know they're it's they're hurting they're hurting all right they're not getting that consistent two or three dollar a mile uh spot market freight that maybe you are all right and if you are good to be honest if i were you i would keep your mouth shut and just keep doing what you're doing because like i said the trucking industry is cutthroat and as soon as you share any information on youtube either in the comments or you give out names or anything, people are gonna start trying to follow you, see where you work, what you're doing, and they're gonna to try to steal, you know, 
steal those loads for you or, or, or flood that lane, all right? So that being said, you know, I, I'm not... I'm just, you know, if you're trying to go leave those kind of comments down below that, you know, I'm still making $3 a mile, this and that, well, you know what? Just keep it to yourself. Great. I'm glad things are still going good for you. But if I were you, I would just not even say anything and keep that to yourself because things can change like that, especially like, you know, giving out information or or talking about stuff like that. People are going to try to follow your your page you're going to try to look at your name and see if you're on facebook and stuff it's just it's just what's happening right now everything's so cutthroat people are so desperate that they're gonna they're they're gonna do that like uh look at chasing uh andrew jackson all right he's been doing oil fill and everything he ended up getting a company job out in the oil field making like 2600 dollars a week they're trying to read names on the side of buildings and you know, uh, zoom in on paperwork that's on the billboard, you know, on the, on the, um, the, 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 what is it, the cork board inside where he's uh, offloading water at and stuff. They're trying to find out anything and everything to get in whatever he's doing. All right. So like I said, it's, it's, it's that bad right now. If you're doing good, good. I'm, I'm happy for you. But don't, don't come on here and tell everybody that, you know, they're all idiots and, that they don't know what they're doing. And, you know, some of them probably are, all right? Some of them probably are idiots. But to be honest, there's just not enough to go around right now, guys. There's just not enough to go around, all right? The, 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 the market's still dropping and capacity is still through the roof. It's just like what I said about company drivers. There's just too many drivers out here, all right? They, they fed us all this crap about uh, driver shortage, driver shortage, blah, 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 you know, over and over. And they, they basically, it, we, we're seeing inflation in the trucking industry. This is our inflation, all right? Let alone the inflation that we see with goods and, you know, tires, uh, service and everything. We're seeing the inflation caused by the supposed driver shortage here, which really was driver turnover and trying to find the cheapest driver that the, you know, the mega carriers are just constantly constantly trying to find the right driver to just say yes to everything and work for the lowest amount and that's what that's what we have right now in this industry all right we have just an abundance of drivers and no freight all right um like i said i'm gonna still try to i guess i'm kind of going off the tracks here a little bit but like i said i'm trying to talk primarily owner operators right now and at least at least uh lease on owner operators you know to a, to a carrier so if you think you're going to come out here and you're going to buy your truck and god forbid you have large payments like like i do like an idiot all right and you're going to just lease on to any carrier willy-nilly and expect them to have dedicated freight and stuff you know you're you're putting out, you're putting yourself out on a limb out there you're, you're taking a risk that things could change they can change like that right now all right and you know if you're leased onto a carrier not only are you running some of these really cheap brokered loads and maybe even dedicated freight because they're trying to keep the contracts here but you're also paying some of these carriers 20 25 30 35 percent maybe more if you calculate some of the other costs that are involved with it you know the, the truck rental the I don't know, insurance surcharge, the back office fee and, and whatnot, and all, all these other charges that some of these carriers, uh, you know, subtract from your settlement. And uh, you, you might find that you can't pay yourself, you know? You might find that you can only invest back in your business. And if you have home expenses and things going on at home, you might be SOL. You, you have to look and see, do I... Do I continue to put money in the savings in my business in case something happens? Or do I, you know, send that home? Do I put it in my personal, fine, you know, my personal bank? And it's going to be that constant balance now that you got to, you got to find. Because either way, you know, you might have a heater go bad. You might, the hot water heater might go bad at home. Uh, you might have a pipe burst. Uh, transmission might go in your wife's car. You know, any any amount of, I don't know, what you want to call it, like a, 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 an emergency out of that budget, it could, it could make or break you right now, or, or at least some of you guys, all right? 
because like I said, I've I've looked through YouTube, and it, like some of the some of these channels, like some of the stuff that they're posting, it's like heartbreaking almost. All right, they're losing everything. They're losing their truck. Some of these guys, they took mortgages out on their house for their trucks and stuff. And you know, some of them bought you know super overpriced expensive equipment. But then there are others that you know, if you look at what they did, everything that they did seems right. You know, and they're still losing stuff. They're still getting repossessed and going bankrupt and things. So, you know that that from a from a lease operator standpoint, you're rolling the dice. Uh, the only thing I could say is you got to keep your cost as as cheap and low as possible. You know, you're gonna have to find those repair shops that they're dirt cheap, that have decent mechanics in it, that ain't gonna lie to you. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to probably I hate to say it, you know, you might actually, if you don't ever, if you're one of those guys that say, I will never buy Chinese tires, well, you, you might want to start looking into buying Chinese tires. The, the, what I say, put them on your, uh, your, I mean, your steers? No. But at least maybe think about putting them on your drives. Because, like I said, the things are, things are just out of hand. Inflation's through the roof, and you're not going to, you're not going to force, unless everyone comes together. You're not going to force these brokers to pay you three dollars a mile. It's not going to happen. It, you know, because you still have the carriers that are just worrying about back back hauls and everything else. They did the capacity, the capacity for loads. You know, it's just simply not there, and truck capacity and is just through the roof. All right, the, there's just too many people fighting over the same loads. Period. All right. I'd like to say that there's like a light at the end of the tunnel, but there isn't. If you if you look through through uh, the way the economy's going and things like that, the reason you know flatbed is kind of soft this year and everything. Well, interest rates are super high. When interest rates are super high, businesses aren't going to just randomly take huge loans out and try to expand because well because they don't want to pay the high interest rates. All right, they don't want to pay the high interest rates. They don't want to pay that much money to borrow money. You know what I mean? And the same thing with housing and everything else like that. It all follows the economy. You know, we are like uh, rooted within the economy. We we practically run it as much as it, you know, runs us. And I, I just don't see things going good with the economy this year, especially with the election year. I mean. So far, it doesn't seem like anybody's trying to do anything to, to prop up the economy, at least to look good for you know the elections. It looks like they don't even care, all right? I'm trying not to get political here, but it's getting a little bit there. All right, we're going to stop it right now. That being said, uh, consumers, all right? Consumers right now, most of them are getting by with credit. Eventually, all this is going to, every, eventually all this is going to come to an end, and there's going to be defaults. It's going to be default on cars. We already saw repossessions go way up. Repossessions on trucks are way up. And the, the money's going to stop flowing because the credit's going to stop. All right? There's people literally living off credit cards right now. And, and eventually that's, that's going to stop. And we're going to see, you know, consumer spending dwindle down to nothing just about. <laughs> it, it's like even Tyson, all right? chicken, meat, all kinds of meat. Besides, you know, besides the boycott now, supposedly over the immigrant thing. I'm not even going to get into that. But sales are down. And when I mean sales are down, I mean like Walmart is not ordering that much meat because they're not selling that much meat. <laughs> you know, people aren't eating. They're cutting back. They're going to rice and beans, you know, Dave Ramsey way, I guess. Uh all right, I, I'm going off topic, but you know it's all intertwined and interconnected, and you get what I mean. Uh, there's a good video out there that I brought up a while ago about um, the CFO of ATS. All right, uh, Anderson Truck Services or whatnot. He he's been making videos about you know their outlooks on the market and stuff. I'll probably put you know I'll put that up you know up on the screen here. 
um, like right now, I guess. But, you know, go check out some of the videos that he's been putting out. It pretty much, you know, they, they know what they're doing. There's a lot of money involved with a, you know, a, a large fleet like that, and they, they follow the economy. And uh, that means you need to follow the economy, too, even as, you know, one man or a small fleet owner-operator or whatnot. So now I talked about lease drivers or drivers that are leasing on to carriers. Let's talk about if you're going to get your authority. And, and this is where, uh, you know, I thought about restarting my authority, all right? I had my authority previously before COVID, and, uh, you know, I had debt. I, I saddled myself with debt. I made a bunch of big, bold decisions, you know, trying to grow big. And when, you know, the pandemic came through, I wasn't prepared for it, and I had you know, employees that I just wasn't going to hang out to dry and I just let them go. And, you know, I lost, I lost all that. All right. It, it was pretty much, I, I was able to overcome a lot of, a lot of my failures or stupidity, I should say, with trying to be cheap with buying trucks and things with the amount of income I was making off a dedicated carrier. All right. So en enough about me, well, you know, let's get into what I was saying. So if you're going to get your authority, all right. You know, call. Well, first of all, get, get like a, get the DAT board. You know, try to get the DAT board. If not, you can get the one, two, three load board. You don't even need DOT numbers. All right, and look and see what loads are in your area, and try to try to route some triangles. Some, uh, you know, trade. Uh, what do you want to call it? Some freight routes out that, that get you back home and stuff, and try to figure out you know, how much you're actually going to be able to make on those lanes running only spot market. Because you're not going to have a dedicated carrier. You're, I mean, you're not going to have a dedicated customer right off the bat. If you do, you know, you're doing better than like 90% of the guys out there. But if you're going to just come out here and just get in your authority and stuff, you're going to have a hard time, period. You're not going to, a lot of brokers aren't going to work with you right now. There's so much fraud, rampant fraud going on on the broker side and the the carrier side that most of these brokerages will not work with new carriers period even ch robinson changed their criteria um i think they're up to six months or six months you have to have your authority again before they would work with you brand new right off the bat you're pretty much stuck with tql and even tql is getting a little you know uh, uh, i would say cautious all right for the most part, most of these brokers are working with carriers that they've worked for with a long time. You know, for with a long time, they're sending emails out. A lot of the, a lot of loads, a lot of the decent paying freight ain't even making it to the load boards. So if you're, you know, if you're a brand new carrier, you're, they're, you're almost shut out of the market. And it's not because there's some kind of monopoly about, you know, keeping new carriers out. It's 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 the the rampant fraud. That's it. They, they don't want to get ripped off just as much you don't want to get ripped off. And that's, that's why a lot of new brokers don't get worked with either because they're afraid, you know, carriers are afraid they're going to rip them off, not going to pay them. So, I don't know. I, I could keep, I could probably go on for a whole hour. I'm at, what, 23 minutes or something rambling on about this. I'm just trying to get some information out here to you guys, you know. Because I still see guys pouring into the industry, new uh, new owner operators and stuff. I, I watch a lot of channels on on YouTube because, well, I'm doing reefer, you know, reefer freight, and a lot of times I might be sitting in the back for three or four hours, can't sleep, getting calls for uh, lumpers and whatnot. So guess what am I doing? Trying to educate myself, going through channels, seeing if I can get any new information on know how to better better my business and while doing that I also come across these channels where the guys there, there's a there's a couple channels I've already come across they've had their authority for three or four months five months six months and they're backing out already they're giving up their authority I don't remember seeing that before you know here and there you might see one or two but I don't remember seeing that that you know that before like I said things are not good I would like to say that you know, there, there's things you can do, but the, I will say this, all right, there are guys that are already established that can improve their business and survive through this, but if you're coming out of this already behind the eight ball, 
it's going to be pure luck at this point. Pure luck and, and pure... You're going to have to network. You're going to have to do things that you never thought you'd do. You're going to have to, like, beg. I'm not beg, but you're going to have to beg some of these brokers to work for them. You're going to have to maybe throw out some ideas, like, hey, I'll run this load at the price you're asking for right now as long as, you know, as long as you can give me another load. Things like that. And, and the sad part about it is you might not be able to afford to do stuff like that to, just to gain their trust. If and you know they might just screw you anyway. So, you know that that's oh uh, that's that's just the way the cookie crumbles right now here with the way this market is. You know if you want to if you want to I don't know hear about maybe what 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 you could do and, and ways to improve your business. You know listen to Snorlord. Uh, look up Snor Snorlord the, the Viking trucker. You know, he goes over to one, two, three load board, tries to find you know certain lanes you can run, and and you know pretty much helps you as much as he can to try to be profitable right now. But like I said, it, it, it's, there's just simply it's over capacity. There's going to be winners and losers right now. That's just, just the you know, and and the losers are going to really lose. That's that's what, how it is right now. And I would like to come on here and I'd like to say yes. You know, I'd like to give some kind of inf magical information that's going to help you succeed no matter what. But the, the problem is, it's, I, I'd be lying to you, you know, if I said you're going to succeed no matter what. You know, things are going to be great. You know, it's it's risky right now. It's just risk. The whole industry, it's, it's getting into the industry, whether you're, like I said, whether you're a company driver or you're new, it's very upside down. It's probably the worst that I've ever seen it in the 10 plus years that I've been out here and, and anybody else that I've talked to uh, you know a lot of old timers they're, they're dropping out now they said oh we had our last hurrah, hurrah run and made our money you know we're dropping out sold their trucks you know told, laid, told all their drivers are closing up shop and they, they got out of the industry so I mean if you can hang in there through this you know that's great but but anyway, uh, I mumbled on now for about 26 minutes, so let's get on down the road. We're going to end up being here at uh, Cisco in about an hour and 11 minutes. Well, actually, no, we're, we're not. We're going to go to a rest area that's about 10 miles, 10 miles to until Cisco. Uh, we're going to go to this rest area, and I'm going to go to sleep for like five or six hours, and then we're going to get up and deliver here at 5.30 in the morning. So, uh, yeah, let's get on down the road. Sorry about blabbering on there, freaking 26 minutes, but I'm just trying to get the, a point across. That's really, that's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to scare anyone. I just want you guys to make sure that you know you're not gonna like hit some magical uh, gold rush coming into this, especially in 2024. So it, it is what it is, guys. It's, you know, you gotta live in reality, so. All right, so we're gonna pull into this rest area here. I think it's uh, mile marker, oh, there it is. Mile marker 131 on 87, just above Albany. Hopefully, this rest area is open. <laughs> watch uh, watch this construction here have this rest area closed. <laughs> it would not surprise me one bit. I sure hope not. Uh, all right. Yeah, it looks like uh, it looks like this construction is just before the rest area. So we're gonna get back over here. So we're gonna pull in this rest area, and I'm gonna take uh, about a five-hour nap or whatnot, and then we're gonna get up and we're gonna get over to uh, we're gonna get over to Cisco. I'm only about three miles away from where I gotta be, which is great as long as it's uh, rest area here. All right, well, I guess that ain't the entrance to the rest area. As long as this uh, rest area here isn't freaking totally jam-packed and I can actually find somewhere to park. Because that's primarily what usually happens up here in the Northeast, is there's uh, nowhere to park. I don't know why they just wouldn't keep that, uh, that, that on-ramp uh, all the way open all the way up into this rest area, but I guess that's how they felt like building the road. All 
All right, so obviously this rest area is jam-packed, so I'm not even gonna attempt to find a spot. I'm gonna pull right behind this guy, and uh, this is where I'm gonna spend uh, the next, uh, like I said, the next five hours. <laughs> 